So, you know, uh, this has to be addressed really quick. When we talk about knife, there's a lot of cool techniques. There's a lot of really fancy stuff, a lot of trapping, a lot of disarms. It's a beautiful art form. Um, I want you to remember the reality of the knife, okay? The best trained people in the world, highest level knife experts in the world, have probably bought themselves with all that training about a 10% greater survival rate for a knife fight, okay? That's important, because we'll, we'll, it's gonna look fantastic and cool and fancy, but first off, we need to, we need to take the romance out of it for a second to remember that. Because I'm telling you, this right here, <coughs> that's so hard to stop when somebody comes right in, okay? Now, we don't all have, a, not everybody has a bunch of skills we can't address just going right to that. And, and, I, and honestly, um, I break my knife matrix apart into f nine levels, and that was for level nine. Because you need, unlike, a lot of other skills where you can just kind of jump in there and go. When it comes to knife, there's a lot of foundation that has to be laid down because there's such less of a chance for error. Does that make sense? If we're, if we're boxing and, uh, and I do something I'm not overly good with yet, I try this and bang and I get hit, I got punched in the face. I live. If I'm grappling and I try something and it doesn't work and you escape or you, 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 you tap me out, I live. You try to do something you're unprepared for with a knife, you die. So it's a, it's a big thing for me that we're going to lay this down in the correct order when you go through the whole knife matrix. Having said that, we're not going to go through the whole knife matrix today. We're going to do fun, fancy stuff. <laughs> well, come on. You drove all this way, right? <laughs> yeah, it's a seminar. Um, you know, the knife is a, it's a terrible subject. It is. And for those people, like, like John, you know, like you have to deal with this sometimes every day as your reality. You know, people that do in security work sometimes have to deal with this as reality. This is a horrible subject. This is terrible. You know, this is this is um this is the real life or death because you don't you don't get to know half the time. Most knife fights aren't knife fights. Most knife fights are assassinations. You don't know it's even you might not even know you're in a knife fight. Right? Most knife fights aren't like, all right, let's do this. And sometimes you see training where he pulls a knife too. Oh my God! Pick a gray one. There you go. Now this, this is a knife duel, right? So there's knife fights and knife duels. The reality is this, okay? He's looking over here, or doing whatever, and it's, that's a knife fight, right? That's an assassination. That's what they, that's most of them are like, okay? So let's not forget about that as we're training, okay? So what we're going to work on today is we're working on two phases. We're going. To, Sorry, it's looking up and this is a rainbow. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. You're so dark. The, the last thing I'm going to mention is that, uh, you know, we had a talk uh, last night. Where's Vegas? We had a talk, <laughs> we had a, we had a talk last night about uh, the spirituality and the morality section of training. Um, uh, and I think, you know, uh, for, I saw Sifu Rick Fay talk about um, that you have to have a spiritual component when it comes to the knife. And I completely agree with that. Because, uh, and I'm not getting into a religious side of it, I'm just saying a spiritual, a spiritual component which helps kind of guide your morality. Because you need some form of morality if you're going to train with a blade. And if you are a person without some form of morality, I won't train you with the blade. So, has everybody here got morals? You signed the moral waiver? I have morals. It's like this, you dip it in your blood and you sign it, you know. All right, so we're going to look at uh, two phases today. We're going to look at phase one, because everything has to play off phase one. All right, and then we're going to look at phase six in the second section, which is uh, disarming. Okay? So in phase one, what we deal with is we, we deal with what we call tapping and passing. Uh, tapping and passing is like, um, it's like glue. Okay? It's the things that help hold your techniques together and get from one, or transition, go from one thing to another. So if you're a grappler, Right? Um, you can learn an arm bar, you can learn a choke, you can learn um, a, a good side mount, you can learn all this kind of stuff. But does all that happen individually? Do you get in a choke position, go, that doesn't work, reset, okay, get in an arm bar position, that doesn't work, reset? No, a grapple is live, right? So the biggest part in grappling really is the transitions between. Because if you can't transition between positions, if you can't transition between submissions, you, you, all you have is a bunch of unconnected material. Right? 
So the tapping and passing is how we start to connect things. And the reason why we show that first is because when something goes wrong with the knife, and it does because the knife moves so fast, when it goes wrong, you need to have a skill that's built in to pass by and prepare for something else. If you don't, if you try something and it doesn't work, what do I do? You die. You know, you just get cut. That's all you do. So let's talk about tapping and passing a little bit. So a tap, I'll pull a blade, okay? A tap